This next tactic is referred to as the pin, as in pinning something down, keeping it from moving. And if you notice in this position, the bishop, the bishop is attacking the knight, but x-raying the queen. So if the knight were to move by accident, not noticing this, the bishop would be free to capture the queen. More often than not, you should break pins if uh, your opponent launches one against you. And a simple way would be to simply um, block or interpose this piece between uh, the knight and the queen. Now this is a, a called a relative pin because the knight is actually free to move. But let me set up another position here with the, on the other side on the um, queen side. And a typical pin that happens early in, in many games is this pin here. The bishop is, is attacking the knight and it is pinned against the king. The bishop is x-raying the king. And because the rules say you can't place your king into check, the knight cannot move at all uh, since the king can't be captured. So this is called an absolute pin. The pin is one of the ways you can start to control your opponent, which is a major goal in chess. You want to put him on the, on the defensive to prevent him from attacking you and putting you on the defensive. And then slowly the pressure can build and people are more likely to make mistakes. Being one step ahead of your opponent like this is called having the initiative in chess. Now let's look at an example or two of the pin in an actual game. Before each and every move in chess, you have to evaluate the board. There are two kinds of evaluations that uh, you will learn to make. And the first one you do is a tactical evaluation because you could immediately lose on your opponent's next move. He could checkmate you. So, And then the second is a positional evaluation, which we'll um, cover in the strategic goal section, uh, which I'll be creating shortly. So your first evaluation is a, is a tactical one, which involves uh, looking at checks and captures, all possible captures. So you're looking at pieces which are already being attacked. And then you're also looking for one of the tactics that you're, that you're learning about here in the tactical section. So in this position, we see we do a material. That's generally one of the first uh, things you evaluate. You look at the material balance, yeah, because the game starts out with the same number of pieces and pawns. Um, and we see that the black side has a, a rook, a bishop, and a queen, and the same for the white side. And it looks like like three, five, seven pawns against five pawns. So uh, white is doing quite well. But it looks like he's getting ready to lose a pawn here. It, it is uh, black's turn to move, and you see, notice that the pawns are attacking each other. Uh, but again, how it's critical whose turn it is to move. And also, let's look at this. The bishop is attacking the white pawn once, and it's defended once. So that's the other thing you do. You do a, a count. How many times is something being attacked? How many times is it defended? Because the, these are the elements. These are the, the building blocks for, for all of the tactics that um, I'm explaining here. So in this game, uh, black captured the pawn, and now it's attacking the bishop. Uh huh. So uh, it's trying to place white on the defensive like this. So what you want to do is instead of reacting, uh, you want to try and see if you can find one of the tactics that you can do and also achieve other goals. So you're trying to be as efficient as possible in chess. So this rook you know it isn't doing anything it hasn't developed and so now you can bring it into play by coming here and pinning the pawn against the queen so now if the pawn continued in its plan to take the bishop the rook would be free to capture the queen black saw this and instead moved the rook his rook was also wasn't doing anything it was you know rooks are best placed or uh not in front of their own pawns unless that pawn is passed and can try to become a queen. Um, so it comes and attacks the pawn a second time. So now we have two attackers against this pawn and only one defender, the queen. But because white is one step ahead of black, because uh, now uh, white with this pin is actually attacking the pawn two times now. The bishop is an attacker now. And the rook captures the pawn, attacking the queen, making the queen run. So the queen runs here, attacking the pawn a third time. 
see how players are, are wrestling, trying to wrestle the initiative away from their opponent. Um, so again, every every move that you know, you know what your opponent's intention is. You're trying to you try to create traps, and you do that with the tactics that you're learning about here. So uh, it's attacked three times and defended twice, once by the rook and by the queen. And instead of, uh, well, actually, I can't see a third way of defending, so white sets a little trap for for black. Now, what what this is is an x-ray now, uh, a pin, uh, using his own piece, though. And um, so if, if the... Um, for example, if when the rook moves, the queen will be attacking the queen. Now, the way you you uh, evaluate these things and confine them uh, on the board is you look for, at all checks first, right? Because that's the most forcing move move in the game, and you see that the rook can actually check the king here. So, um, and then this this ties in with another tactic I'm going to be explaining later, which is um, uh, an overworked piece. And it also relates to the uh, removing the guard tactic, which um, we covered earlier. And one more thing you always need to look at is uh, your king king safety, and and that is how um, how many escape squares he may or may not have, and what pieces are guarding um, the pawns in front of the king. But if you notice here, the uh, you know the queen is guarding this this file. The king can't can't move to either of these two squares. So let's say uh, Black doesn't see this this little trick here and captures the the pawn. Well, then the rook could launch the check, and unless um, you know the queen blocks this, this is checkmate actually. So you know, let's say he still doesn't. Well, he's forced now actually to capture the capture the rook, and now the queen is free to capture the queen. So not good for Black. So instead, actually, Black saw this threat and did not capture the pawn, but instead uh, launched a superior counterattack and attacked the queen. I call this the Chicago way in my book from the film The Untouchables, if, if you know that reference. Um, so the white uh, queen moves out of the attack of the rook. And that frees White up for a, a move, and he uh, pushes the pawn, uh, attacking one of these pawns, and White responds by capturing. And now Black throws a check in. The king runs. You know, with uh, most attacks, you know, you can either run, or block, or capture the attacker. I mean, not all of them are always available, but you those are your possible options. You can try and choose the, the best one in, in the particular situation that uh, you're in. And now the queen checks the king here, and the pawn blocks this attack while simultaneously attacking the queen. And the queen runs back. And now white being one of the best tactical players in the history of chess, um, sees that he has the initiative here, and you know you and he you know you can break these things down again by looking at the checks, um, and not too many moves in advance. Yes, uh, so you have this check here, and then after that you can see that there's a check with the queen. So anyway, you will learn these things. You improve as you um, have more practice in chess, and so White attacks the queen, forcing the queen to run. Uh, and the queen captures the the bishop, which uh, probably was a mistake here. Uh, unless I'm not sure if there are other moves available, but let's just look at what happened in the game. So the queen captures the the bishop, and the rook checks the king, and there's really uh, the the king could run here, but then it would be checkmate uh, right here if the queen came here. So the rook, the black rook, uh, blocks, and now. The queen throws this check in, forcing the king to run because the rook could, can't block here because it's in um, it's pinned. So there's another pin here. Um, so the king has to run, and now this is a very cool move. Uh, let's see if you can spot it, and it involves another pin. So pause the video for a second and see if you can if you can find the winning move. 
Okay, I didn't pause the video, so I'm, I'm guessing you did. Um, so uh, what white does here is attacks. So the rook, in a sense, is attacked once by the rook. So if we can add another attacker, which I call the gang attack, um, the rook is pinned to the king. The rook can't take the queen. Now we have two attackers against the rook and only one defender. So in this position, it's, uh, it's game over no matter what... Um, black tries he can try and create it because now we have a mate threat as well or a threat to win the queen the black queen so it doesn't really matter what uh, black does here black is lost uh, he can try to create an escape square for his king and then the rook could capture with check and game over there are all sorts and varieties of pins with pins which entail the uh, a higher rated piece um, shielded by a lower rated piece and there's a related tactic called the skewer, which is the opposite, where the higher rated piece is in front of the lower rated piece, and if it moves, then the lower rated piece gets captured. So let's look at one of those right now, too. So proceed to the video on skewers.